You're listening to the True Talk podcast, the place for real insights on real estate with real people. In today's episode, we've got Magda Rosola, one of Charlotte's real estate community leaders. Magda, thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited to have you as our guest. Um, I I remember in 2019, I almost didn't make it to the NAREP meeting um, because I couldn't find the door to the entrance. And I'm so glad I made it there because that's when I met you. Yes. So many other amazing people in NAREP. And um, it's been it's been really great to know you. Thank you. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, Daniel. Thank you so much for having me here. My name is Magda Isola. I have been in real estate for almost 20 years. I studied in general brokerage back in 2001, 2002 back in New Jersey, and then came to North Carolina about 16 years ago. As most people from New Jersey do. Yes, (laughs) (laughs) and I started in new construction. So I'm currently with DRB Homes, new home sales consultant with DRB Homes, at a neighborhood called the Townsend Greenway, which is about a mile and a half from Uptown Charlotte. So I am very involved with the industry. Uh, as board of directors with Canopy, I am for 2023 the diversity, equity, and inclusion chairwoman for mm-hmm. NC Realtors. So I'm very involved with the industry. I think you're being a little bit modest when you say <laughs> yes. you're involved with the industry, Magda. As I recall, you um, you've won numerous awards. Um, you're in the top 250 agents in the country for NORAP. You've been named three times with the North Carolina Builders Association as the salesperson of the year. Yes. So let's take a moment away from modesty. Tell us, <laughs> over the last several years, how many families have you helped? How much real estate have you actually sold? Well, I appreciate the question. It's been, in the past uh, six, seven years, it's been over $300 million in volume in sales in over 450 families. But over my career, it has been over half billion dollars in sales. Wow. And over a thousand families serve uh, wow. through my career. All right, so we are gonna make notes and remember everything you say <laughs> when it comes to the advice giving. So yes. That's, that's amazing, you should be really that. proud. And I have to tell you that no matter who I meet that knows you, everyone holds you in such high regard and, and, and loves you. So. Uh, we, we do really appreciate you taking your time because clearly you're very busy. I am. So Thank um, you. We, yeah. we recently had this mastermind session and everybody that walked in the room that saw Magda was in the room, they immediately lit up and I was like, oh, they know Magda. And then That's they right. went over and hugged her. Like she yes. knew everybody in the room. That was it's awesome. It's like when you um, have kids or a new puppy as a parent. <laughs> Your friends no longer want to see you. They want to see your kid or your puppy. Yes. Right? That's that's what makes you popular. So. Yeah, she was the star of that event. That's we have to, we have to be honest about yeah. it. Yeah, that's funny. So, Magda, we're so fortunate to have you here today, but we, we do have to. Your story is so amazing of sort of how you got to this place in life. So t- tell us a little bit about your story, you know, not just in, in real estate, but as a person and, and how you got to this place in life. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Matt. So as some people know, not many people know my personal story. I came to the U.S. uh, from Nicaragua back in 1989 with nothing, truly nothing. Uh, Literally, I came with just the clothes in my bag and my siblings and I. Mm -hmm. We um, came to the U.S. uh, through Mexico and then landed in New Jersey. And... um, work for five years in a company and flipping to the newspaper five years later, I, I saw uh, at, on the paper, Weicker Realtor, unlimited income. And that caught my attention. Um, it is limit, true, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I mean, in theory, um, it is, in yes. theory, you know. There's no caps. That's right, there's no caps. You, you, you know, uh, endless possibilities. We are in a career, you guys and myself, in it, that you choose your income depending on the activities that you, and how many people you decide to serve. So um, I was in my late 20s when I um, went to Wiker Real Estate School and decided to go to, and become a realtor to help people. At the very beginning, and I'm gonna be very transparent with you, it was about making money. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have that vision that I have 20 years later today about helping people, changing people's life. That's what we do. We are in the business of changing people's life. But back then, in my late 20s, 
uh, wanted to, you know, pursue this American dream, which I am the embodiment of the American dream. Yes. This nation, the United States of America, is the best country in the world. I have traveled the world from Egypt to Turkey to Spain to everywhere. I've been in so many countries, so many islands, mm -hmm. and I always think, oh my God, we really live. I don't really care the economy, what's going on. This country today, 2023, is still the best country in the world. The opportunities that this country give to people is, uh, is unheard of. We have, you know, it's the American dream. It's, it's, we don't have the Nicaraguan dream. We don't have the Mexican dream. We only have the American dream, and it's available for those that want to pursue it. And I have achieved it through real estate. Through mm -hmm. my real estate career, have helped me. Obviously, I succeed. I succeed. Succeeded through people, because sure. nobody succeeds alone. So I had. I have found mentors. I have found people, customers, um, people that have worked for me or have mm -hmm. worked for them. My um, employers that have blessed me through my career. So going back to general brokerage and Wiker School. So I took my real estate license. Um, became the rookie of the year as a part-timer. First year. Huh? First year. But it was- Not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Once again, it's like your desire. What, what right. is it that you really want? What I have found is that, I, and I was having a conversation with a friend of mine this morning on my way here, mm -hmm. telling her, oh, I'm gonna meet with Matt and Daniel, and this is what we're gonna do. I'm so excited to share my story. I said, you know what? One of the challenges that I see is that people don't know what they want. So mm -hmm. if you don't know what you want, you don't know where you're going. And if you don't know where you are, you also, you don't know. And so if, you know, life is like a GPS. And if, if you know where you are and you know where you're going, it's easy to get there. So in other words, Daniel, I call, I call Lauren actually mm -hmm. on the way here. What floor are you in? And because I was on the bottom floor and she said, we are, our office is on the eighth floor. So now I know where mm -hmm. I'm going. But without knowing where I'm going, I'd be going up and down on that elevator looking mm. for you guys. We, mm. we find people who do that every day. <laughs> yeah. so, it's no, so I knew that's why, you know, you see these rock stars that, oh, my God, first year in the, um, as a real estate agent, or first year as, new, um, in, as a lender, a loan officer, mm -hmm. and they killed it, 25, 40 million. Yes. Because one, they have a goal. You, I had a goal in mm -hmm. mind. You know, how many people do you want to help? One, mm -hmm. you have a goal. Two, you get a mentor and you know they guide you. You need guidance. Nobody is born knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. Everything that I know, everything that I do is because somebody else bothered to teach me. Mm -hmm. and, they, and I learn from them. So I never question excellence. I always, mm -hmm. I'm always searching for the best of the best in their area of expertise and I ask them. And they, people, most people are willing to share their knowledge. Yeah. For sure. Yes. So, so let, me, let me go back to this concept of the American dream. Because, you know, you talked about um, it's available to all of us, right? Yes. Um, and it's defined differently depending on where you are in life. Mm -hmm. So what was your American dream when you first arrived here? And what, what would you say it's evolved to now? Absolutely, that's an that's awesome question. At, for me, at the beginning, once again, in my early, I was 19 when I came to the U.S. It was becoming an American citizen. Mm. It was, it was. I'm proudly, you know, I wasn't born here, but I'm proudly an American citizen today by choice. I have an American citizen passport, that blue passport, oh, that said American citizen. Yes, I can travel yes. the world. Beautiful. I'm very proud of that. So that was my first thing, and, and then becoming a homeowner, mm -hmm. because I think. Once you are a homeowner, it gives you a sense of, sense of pride. That is a, and that's why I love so much real estate, because I'm helping people achieve that. Mm -hmm. The sense of pride, the, the sense of security, the sense of, I know I'm helping them uh, building generational wealth. Right. And generational wealth. Yes, building we, generational wealth. We, we talk about that a lot in our first time home buyer seminars. That yes. Homeowners in America build 44 times the wealth of renters over time. Yes. It's not, not the first It's year. not overnight, yes. And and this is, this is we think, part of the American dream when we're talking about homeownership because yes. I think most people, I think uh, in a survey I read, 70% of people, when they're talking about the American dream, homeownership is a cornerstone of it. 
Yes. Do you find that? A hundred percent. Yes. A hundred percent for sure. Generational wealth. That's a yes. great, it's a great term. Ma- Magda, you mentioned in your first years in the business, you were, you were, you were honest. You were motivated by money. Yes. I, I know you a little bit now. What, how do you view it now? What do you view as your, what, what is your framework for, for what you do every day? I, I know a little bit about how you view it. I don't think it's, I don't think it's based in income or anything like that. How do you view it now? Yeah, no, I, it's, obviously we all do work <laughs> to make a living, right? We, that, that's a given. But today it's more about changing people's life. How I, Magda Isola, is impacting others, my colleagues, my people that I know, my customers, my real estate agents, how I, with my actions, are changing their perspective in life. Sometimes you are a conversation away with a realtor to change their life. So it's more, I am working more on my legacy, what is gonna be left behind once I'm gone, and what people are gonna be saying when that lady was really nice, you know, she changed my life. And I can say that about many of my mentors, that they have impacted me in a positive way. So I want to be, what I said to my children, I want to to make a dent in the universe. So on that note, Mm -hmm. we know how many families you've helped. Yes. And we know how many homes you sell. But you just mentioned, if I can help another realtor. Yes. Tell us about Tuesdays with Magda. Okay, so I have this program that is called Tuesdays with Magda. And it is free. It is Mm -hmm. pro bono. And it's a way of, for me, to pay back of all the greatness and goodness that I have received from other people in the, in the past. For me to pass along my knowledge. And so I, one of the rules though is you have to be newer in the industry. Right. Uh, when I say so newer, less than yeah. two years okay. in the business. Yep. Because when I feel, and this is my paradigm shift, my, my thinking, when you are more than two years in the business, you already have acquired probably bad habits. Mm-hmm. And you have your own thinking. And I'm not here to argue what works and doesn't work. I can't, I'm here to listen to you, what you need, what right. your priorities are, mm. and how I can b- bring the light out of you. Because we all have gifts and light inside. Some of us don't know how to bring it out. And so I'm there to listen. So it's not really a program A, B, C, D. It's more I listen. What is your challenge? We talk about scheduling, priorities goals, activities, and then most of the time it turns into personal conversations aside from business. Mm-hmm. And, and when we get to the root of the problem, when, when I'm not selling or I'm not getting leads, or it is, has to do a lot with personal, a personal mm-hmm. thing that is going on in their mm-hmm. lives. Mm-hmm. And I'm so lucky that people open up to me and so they allow me to help them. So, you know, interesting that you, that some of the things you say you talk about because we recently had a realtor mastermind once in that you um, participated in and you know the feedback that you gave is make sure to make a certain number of calls a day touch your database what would you say when you're talking to a newer agent yes. or an agent that may be struggling yes what do you give as the number one element of advice to increase their business and to achieve their their goals. Absolutely. Well, with this year, 2022, you know, in my opinion, was a transitional year. 2023, I was reflecting this morning, what is 23 going to be? In my opinion, 2023 is going to be a year of inventory, Mm. a year of reflecting and making decisions on what we want to do with our lives, not only personal, but also business. So I feel that a lot of people will be switching jobs Hmm. in terms of profession, as well as switching offices, Hmm. looking and thinking that it's going to be better somewhere else. But they have to remember that wherever they go, they're taking themselves Mm -hmm. with them. (laughs) So what I will recommend is in 2023, because that's all we know, as we know, uh, traffic is slow. Business is a little slower. Mm-hmm. Not to those that keep activities going every day. Mm-hmm. So 75% of your business or your day should be talking to people. With customers, with realtors, with past, customer, but past customers or clients. For me, they are customers. My, my client is my builder, DRB Homes. <clears throat> so past customers, past clients, realtors, and um, trying to Tell people your value. 
Why Matt? Why Daniel? Why are so, you so special? So walk us through that, okay? Mm -hmm. because Prospecting, the, basically. Yeah. Yes, but all, yes. Uh, yeah. But let's talk about calling a past client, okay? Because mm -hmm. I talk to people all the time, and they don't know what to say. I don't want to bother them. I don't want to just call and ask for business. You know, it's awkward. What, what's your... I mean, you've been doing this a long time. You've had plenty of, plenty of past clients to yes. call. What have you found that works well, that feels comfortable for you and the client? It's the, the number one thing for me is relationship. Mm -hmm. So when you have a good relationship with your past clients or past customers, it's an easy phone call. So is you're going to call them not for business, and mm -hmm. that's where people get all caught up. Mm -hmm. You're calling them to check on them. Mm. A concern of you, you know, when COVID hit two and a half years ago, I call everybody, making sure they were okay, and their kids were okay, and their families were okay. That was it. And because right. of that, I got a 30% referral business wow. because they remember me. We need to be top of mind. So, but the approach is relationship, not transactional, because people see yeah, it yeah. and feel it. You, I said, you always have to give from your heart. And in this, we are in a servicing business. So when you feel I'm bothering you, you're thinking transactional business, I need mm -hmm. a lead from you, don't do that. You're calling truly to check on people, to see how they are, and to offer. Is there any, I always end my, my conversation, is there anything in the world I can do for you? 99% mm -hmm. of the time they say no, but they said, Magda, thank you. You're the only one that I've called. For Christmas, on, uh, Christmas, time I call on New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve I call, and right to this morning I did 45 phone calls just to wish everybody a happy new year. Wow. And I'm here, this if you morning. need, this morning this before morning. getting here. Like, I mean, you sound like you're still a rookie trying to go find your first deal. Yeah, that's exactly, <laughs> thank you. And that's, that's right? exactly, yeah. exact. so you have to come from that mindset that even never though you stop. have, yes, you never stop. You never stop, you be, you never stop. be content. Never satisfy. Mm. Never satisfy. Uh, there was a time that I, I carry 92 customers under contract. And I continue doing my CMAs. I continue making the phone calls because you so need to. So wait a minute. So you had 92 people under, under con contract at, at one that time. Point. Yes. And you were making the phone calls. Yes, like morning. I didn't have anybody. So how do you organize your day to do that? Let's yes. walk us through that yeah. because I need that organization. Yeah. <laughs> we all do. Yes. All right. So my day starts at 4 30 in the morning. Oh, I'm done. You lost I'm, Daniel just yeah, then. Just lost <laughs> right. Is there a 715 plan? <laughs> so my day starts at 430 in the morning. Uh, I have to have time for me because I'm a right. very occupied, very busy person. Yeah. And I, so 430 to 630 in the morning is basically my time um, where I read, I meditate, um, I plan my day. Even though I, I review my day. I plan the day before. Mm. And uh, so you, you gotta get into the habit before going to bed, wants to be thankful and grateful for the day you had, whether it was good, bad, or indifferent. We, I'm always grateful. You know, the day is over, we can get to start again tomorrow. Happened. Yes. It happened. Yes. Right? So you're, you always express your gratitude to the universe, to God, to Buddha, to whatever you believe in. Mm -hmm. And I always do that at night, plan the day, and then go to bed. I go to bed at nine though. That's why I'm able wow. to, 9 p.m., I'm out. You lost me. You lost yeah. <laughs> It's okay. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this whole plan. Yes. I'm just gonna shift it. Yes, so you, you would have you would have lost me a few <laughs> a few years ago too. But with two small kids, like at nine o'clock comes, yeah. I'm I'm ready to call it a day as well. That's right. Oh, so yeah. four thirty in the morning. Then I, my personal time six thirty review the day um, when I was selling back in four mill that neighborhood was extra super busy. I would be in the office probably by eight a.m. Which we open at ten. Once again, it was those two hours block to call people. Yeah. Because if not, if, if, if you open those doors and people start coming in. Well, you had walk-ins, right? Yes, you had walk-ins throughout right. the day. Yeah. Yeah. So I block time in the morning because when it's out of, um, in, it, when you do that in the morning, you do your prospecting. The problem that people postpone prospecting mm -hmm. for afternoon or for the evening, there's more people at night, just make the phone call. Mm -hmm. And if people don't answer, leave a message. Yeah. It doesn't matter what time you call, just do the activity. So I, I will block in the morning. Um, right now where I am, it's a little slower, so I have more time to call. So I, I get to the office around 8.30, a.m. From mm -hmm. 9 to 11, I block to call. And it could be past clients or customers, realtor, <coughs> business partners, um, or anybody that might need my help. Even business, I do business to business. 
as well I reach out and that can be also first in person. Right. So I went to the gym owner two blocks away from my neighborhood mm. and had a conversation who I was, what I do. People cannot be a secret agent, Daniel. <laughs> a secret agent. Cannot be a secret agent. Right. And that's you're one of the big, CIA you're not a secret that. agent. Yeah, so the, funny. yes, in, in the, secret agent. the job that we do, or the service that we provide, people need to know what, what you do and who you are. Mm -hmm. So this actually, this guy sent me two customers that end up buying. I mean, really? he has sent me multiple, right. but if I said, I wonder, I always wonder, I wonder if I haven't spoken to him, TJ, so what is the conversation like with the gym owner? I yes, want to hear. Of course. I want to know what that's like. Yeah, so I went in and I introduced myself. I brought information from my company, you know, the RB folder with the flyers sure. and everything. And I just told him, I said, hey, you know, and this is mostly, most of the time when we just open a neighborhood that nobody knows where we are. And I said, hello, TJ. I did a little research on him before. Mm. So I know who You're he is. There. She makes it sound like she just walked right. in. Yeah. She, just walked she in. had stuff. Yeah. Yeah. She had donuts. She did she research. Had a team She's got a cyber stock back at the CIA. Yes. The secret agent did that. That's right. God, okay. Go so ahead. I already know a little bit about the person that I'm talking right. to. It's very good to, you know, so you don't sound like a total stranger. Right. And I said, I understand you purchased this building about two years ago. You know, kudos to you because two years ago there was nothing going on here. Mm. So that means to me, you believe in the area. I am in the west side of town, which is a developing and growing area. And then he said, yeah, I, I was waiting for you guys to come because he oh, knew wow. there were townhouses coming. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm the community sales manager. My name is Magda. And that's how the yeah. conversation started. He, I said, show me around because obviously I'm going to have 133 buyers, homeowners, and I'd love to send them here because we don't, we don't have amenities in my neighborhood mm -hmm. and they can literally walk to his right. place. And that's how the conversation started. So we exchange information. I send him customers, he sent me customers. Right. So you've got a background prior to new home sales and general brokerage. Yes. Can you convert, I'm putting you on the spot, but could you convert what that conversation might have gone like if you didn't have a new neighborhood mm -hmm. with the guy waiting for you for two years you didn't realize? Your general brokerage salesperson and you want to go make a similar type of sales call mm -hmm. without a neighborhood like that. Yes. How would that go? That will go, well, first, I, you will have to, I will go to a neighborhood or a business in a neighborhood that I will service. Because you cannot, I always say, you cannot fake emotions. You cannot make up stuff. Mm -hmm. You have to be real. You have to be authentic. That's missing from our business. Mm. So it, once again, you have to come from a heart of serving hood. I'm serving. Mm -hmm. So I will go into the business. Mm -hmm. Once again, do a little research on the person sure. and say, hey, my name is Magda. I'm with Remax. Let's say I'm with General Brokerage. I'm sure. with Remax. Yeah. And I am the expert in 28208. Mm. And yeah. I have found that in this area, there is over 20 families that move on a daily basis. Because in the whole Charlotte, I mean, that's Charlotte, right? Mm -hmm. In the whole Charlotte market, there is over 100 families that move daily. Mm -hmm. Maybe that zip code is 20, right. uh, cutting mm -hmm. it down sure. to a fifth, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So you, you state factual numbers or, or facts that are happening in the neighborhood mm -hmm. and uh, present yourself as a service provider. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that you come into contact with a lot of people. I do a lot of business in this neighborhood. I'd love to uh, gain referrals from you. And at the same time, as I'm speaking with potential buyers and sellers, I will send them your way. Mm. So I will, yeah. I will have kind of that conversation because at the end of the day, it's about um, helping each other. Yeah. You know, we need sure. to be more open-minded in terms of collaboration. People have to be, it's not only it's for me, it's for me, it's for me. No, how can I help you? How can I serve you? How can I enhance your life? What can I do to make your life easier and better? Think that way. Yeah, but it, it, it sounds like to me, you just focus on, you're a connector. And yes. You focus on making those connections and let, if you have the right motivations and the right intentions, you just let it all work out. Yes. Because it will work out. That's the, right. The business side, the personal side, yeah. all if you just have the right intentions and connect up with as many people as you possibly can and form those relationships, yeah. everything tends to work out. Absolutely. Always, Matt. Uh, we are in the business of relationships. Yeah. When people understand that, that you, we are in a business of relationship as well as a business of serving. So when you come from that mindset, you know, yes, do I post the stuff like when I win my awards? I do. I think it does give you validity yes, yeah, in wearing that kind of business. But do I post that every time I sell a home, I sell a home? I don't. 
Nobody cares. Mm-hmm. You people, don't have that much time in the day. I You'd don't. be doing that all day long. Imagine in 2020, <laughs> I closed 119 houses. I, it would be 100, and people would be like, really? Who right. cares? Yes. Right. So now, if you post, I have been like, you, what you just shared with me when I came in, Magda, we had a closing in three days, and we helped this family. We saved a loan. That's a big deal. Right. That is incredible. So you've got right. people into a home that they thought they couldn't get. They, they That's didn't. incredible. Yeah. Through long, you know, you guys. Yeah. Incredible. That, and we, we love doing that. Yeah, um, yeah it's fun. It, it's, it, makes, it makes the stress of the everyday all worthwhile, you know? Yes. Let me go back to something. Um, we're just talking about the different things you're looking to achieve and visions and things like that. As 2023 Chairwoman for the North Carolina um, Council on um, Diversity and Equity and Inclusion, what, what, what are you looking to achieve this year in that role? Well, uh, we do have uh, an enormous amount of uh, associations through the state. Mm -hmm. My number one goal, if time allows me, it will be to visit each one of them. Not all of the local associations have diversity, equity, and inclusion um, committees. Sure. So I would like to start there, trying to help them launch the committees, um, as well as continue educating people that diversity is not only skin, my accent, where Magda came from, is also a diverse way of thinking, a diverse way of fe- even feeling where they come from, how white people act from certain regions of the country or different countries. Why do they act the way they act? But sometimes we, if you're not having those conversations, you don't understand or you know, traveling have made me very wise. I have learned so much about cultures, about food, about what take people, right. what make people happy. And when you get to know people, I'm a, I, I feel that business rolls right in front of you. It's, it's just... Yeah. Again, it, yeah. yeah. if you connect with people, people. everything yeah. takes care of itself. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So we will be getting to get um, the uh, local associations to get on board, to start having those conversations, and um, to get more people involved. In, with the diversity, equity, and inclusion at the state level. That's great. Um, you talked about legacy yes. earlier. What do you want your legacy to be when everything's said and done and people are looking back at who Magda was after you're no longer with us? Like, what do you want them to think of? What, what, what would you feel, I, I did this right? Yes. I think... Um, this is going to be, the answer is very egocentric. Uh, but I really would love for people to say that their life have changed mm-hmm. in a positive way because a conversation I had with them. And I was able to change their mindset and see the world through a different lens because that conversation that we had together and, and their life just changed for a better, for, for better. So let's turn to home buyers, okay? Yeah. Look, we've got a lot of people that want to buy homes. Yes. But the market has shifted, right? Things are different. Rates have moved. The inventory's changed. There's uncertainty about home prices. What, what's your advice, particularly now that your number one goal is not just making money? Mm-hmm. What's your advice for prospective home buyers who are nervous and you're questioning whether it's the right move? How do you help them through that journey? Yes, that's a great question. And uh, those are conversations that I have every day with my buyers or potential buyers. I think first we have to know what their goals are. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody is looking to be in their home one or two years, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if so, this is a long-term investment. You know, uh, I had recently, about two months ago, a buyer that came in as soon as he walked in. He said to me, you know, Magda, the interest rate is 7%. 7%." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm sure that didn't. And he was visiting from, I think it was Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And I said, it hasn't changed from the time you left your hotel to here. It's been 7%. (laughs) (laughs) And then then I said, okay, I'm thinking, let's get the elephant out of the room. And this uh, gentleman, he was buying this home for his daughter Mm -hmm. or helping her or Mm -hmm. doing the research. Mm -hmm. And, And... probably late 50s, and I said, let me ask you something. What was the interest rate? What was the highest interest rate that you have ever paid? 
in purchasing homes because I'm, I assume mm -hmm. sometimes that's good and sometimes it's not bad, that he purchased more than one home through his life. Mm -hmm. And I find out that he have purchased five homes okay. during his lifetime. Mm -hmm. And, and then when he said, oh, my highest interest rate was 17.9%. 17.9%. And I loved it. <laughs> and then I said, oh, my God. I said, so would you tell your daughter that 7% is not that of a big deal? And then he looked at me. He said, you're right. If you put it in perspective. So with that being said. Sometimes we've gotten spoiled. But yeah. Yes. So what happened, the pandemic years, uh, the two and a half years that we have, the, or two years, 20, late 2019 to 2020, the lowest interest rate that we ever had in history, mm -hmm. um, gave a false sense to the economic outlook. Mm -hmm. um, and people got accustomed to that very quickly. They forgot in 2016 we were in the fives, and that was normal. I was looking at all my closings, actually. We were having a good year, too, in the fives, we, right? Yes. People were loving we were, it. It yes. was a good was real estate market. People yeah. loved it. Yes. Yeah. I, in two, I'm sorry. 2016 was a really good year for me. Yeah. And that was the year when I came to uh, the time fielding homes to the DRB homes. Uh, we just branded in July, in June. Uh, but it was a good year. And it, so it was normal. It was better than when I purchased in 2007. I think I purchased a seven and a half percent. So what do I tell people? I, I put things in perspective. You know, we, what is your long-term goals? Let's talk about equity. Are we gonna start gaining the 18, 20% equities that we were gaining back in the day? No, it's not gonna happen. But here in the Charlotte market, we are so, so lucky. Yeah, we are. To have this market that is still projecting a three to 4% a, a, you know, gain in mm -hmm. prices. So even if you buy today a $500,000 at a 6%, more than likely that home would be 515 by the end of the year. Right. Yeah. So and you're going to start once again building that generational wealth. And the news has done a very yeah. good job um, promoting itself, which is based on negativity. And yes. that is home prices are going down. But the reality is, in most cases, the appreciation rate has gone down. Mm -hmm. In some markets, home prices have actually gone down. We're very fortunate to live in Charlotte. We are. A, a lot of people see national stories that yeah. talk about aggregate home sale numbers, and they think that that's true to their, you know, to this market, and it, and it's just in truth not. Mm -hmm. Right. They, you know, we get people that are saying, "Hey, we we're waiting for the housing prices to come down," and and I we have to you know share with them the statistics of what we know being on the front lines every day that with all the people that are moving to this area, we just don't have enough houses to sell them. That's right. That is the problem. And it's a that supply is and demand issue and you need to you need to, you know, get in a house and you know, quicker, you know, the better the quicker the better, I guess. Yes. So what do you think your overall outlook is for twenty twenty three for home buyers and the real estate market in general? Well, I think uh, this year, twenty twenty three is gonna be like I was saying at the beginning, a, a year that a, a lot of people uh, us being in the business as well as customers will be reevaluating their lives. I believe um, that the market will be kind of the same, probably a little better than 2022. I think it's going to improve a little bit from 2022 because people have come to a conclusion. Okay, this is it. And they the, are going to be new reality. Yeah, 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 this is the, the normal. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And normally when we have like the, the feds in, in June of 2022, and the, the rates went up, it was like shocking right. for everybody. So it takes about a year right. to get over that. So I'm thinking late spring, we're still gonna have a spring market. Yeah. I strongly believe we're still yeah. gonna have yeah. a spring market. People should, if they are thinking about buying, go ahead, call you, get pre-qualified, because there will be a lot of competition that, of people that put the search on hold last quarter, they will be on the market this quarter. And, and inventory may not be as high as it otherwise would be because a lot of people that got those 2.75% rates, they're not moving. That's right. And, and not only that, but the, you know, people that will be buying today are the ones that really have to. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell once again to my customers, don't, don't worry so much about the rate, worry about being in the right home. Yes. Right. You need to be in the right home. And as consultants, you have to have those conversations. The challenge that I see right now, that one, we have unfortunately sometimes uneducated professionals, and they, are, they don't know what to say. That's why they're not having those conversations. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then they don't have the confidence and the background because, you know, competence 
leads to confidence. And once you have that, and it goes around. So if, if you know what you're doing, if you don't know what you're doing, search for, for counselors, search for people that can give you advice so you can advise your customers. Yeah, have genuine conversations yes, with absolutely. people always. Yeah. It's like uh, our Real Talk series for new home buyers. Yes, uh, I, I. That's why we called it this podcast series, the, the True Talk. Yeah, I and love that, it. That's what we want to do. Is yes, having wanna, just these blunt conversations. conversations. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. 2023 will expose, uh, and as 2022 have, the good agents will separate the good agents from the bad agents, and that's across the board in terms of real estate and also loan officers. And mortgage, yes. Uh, I think, I don't know who was the one who said that when the tie goes down, it shows who the people uh, that were uh, swimming in naked are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. That's, I, I, that's where, yes. where you really separate the real pros yes. from the ones that are playing uh, to be professionals. My last question, 20 years in the business. Yes. What advice would you give yourself that you know today? If you could give yourself advice looking back 20 years ago, what would it be? Wow. I think it would be to, if you're a fresh, brand new agent, get a mentor. So we will not take, for me, it took me a little longer Mm -hmm. because you try to do things on your own, get a mentor. If you hire a mentor, whether, yes, you get a mentor, it will and, and obviously define your goals. That, so you know what you want, you get a mentor to guide you, and you will get there faster. Are there opportunities for newer agents who are listening in to get in on Tuesdays with Magda? Are there openings? Yes. There are. Yeah, there are openings. How can people find you? Um, LinkedIn is the easiest way, Magda Sola uh, on LinkedIn. It would be the easiest way to find me. They can private message me. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I'm very quick responding. I can attest to and, that. And we'll put it in the show notes and yes. we'll have sure. all Magda's yeah. <clears throat> contact info. Yes, absolutely. Magda, thank you so much for joining us. Oh my God, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.